Hello everyone! Welcome to a new banner review. This time we'll be talking about the fallen hero and then the one character that has no room here, Corin. As per usual, I'm going to go from order of worst to best, in my opinion. Do understand that despite, you know, uh, the place that certain characters may hand, every character of this banner are basically pretty good and unique enough to demark themselves from other characters very, very easily. So, let's get started, shall we? First off is Burkut. Yes, Burkut is the worst unit of this banner, because his weapon is inconsistent at best. Now, for those who have seen my Refined Theory crafting series, in Episode 3 I did make a weapon for Burkut. Now, the way I worked around Burkut is I used the Crime Healed from SOV as point of reference. Crime Healed in SOV is a weapon that basically gives DC to its wielder and a second ability called Phantasma. Phantasma allows you to make magic damage all the, at all times. So what I did is the first hit that he would receive that is from a Dragon unit, a mage unit, or a healer, would be halved, and because the the enemy would be using would be using magic, he would be able to attack regardless of distance. Here we basically have something like that, but it also works for bow and daggers, which don't make any sense. Though I guess I can kind of see why. Uh, because he did have DC overall. Um, and then he blocks follow-up. And basically, the fact that he blocks follow-up is considered so strong with in combo with DC that it makes him deal 20 damage to someone else. Now, the fact that you're reliant on a certain type of unit which is reliant on what your enemy has, unless it's something like an axe, sword, and lance type of thing, which, you know, like uh, Bra like Legendary Lucina's bow's effect, where it makes a lot of sense because that kind of type will always be common to some extent. Uh, this is inconsistent. Uh, and it was somewhat inconsistent on my weapon as well, which is why the payoff was so strong. Here you have two condition, and with, despite those two conditions, you are still at... The, the payoff is not that strong, is what I mean. The foe cannot make a follow-up should be regardless of what he's fighting. Because it's only working... Like, okay... Actually, you have three conditions to fulfill. You have to have an ally within two space. Your enemy needs to be a bow, dagger, magic, or staff unit, and staff doesn't really work anyway. And on top of that, it lo your ally is losing 20 HP. You have three restriction, and the payoff is ranged unit cannot make a follow up on this guy, and to some extent DC. Ah, part of me makes me wonder if a DC weapon, just straight up DC weapon, would have been almost better. Obviously it's not, but yikes. That's a yikes. Uh, the second problem with Crime Healed is that if you are taking a Silver Lance and you're refining it to res, you literally have Crime Healed against anything that's melee, but with extra stats. Because Crime Heal does nothing if your enemy is not a ranged unit. And I mentioned staffer, staffs earlier, but since this, the, this does not give you Null C Disrupt on top of it, which it should have, I don't understand why it didn't, um, staffs can just freely attack you, so your DC effect don't even matter. Which is why I said it doesn't even work on staffs. Because at the end of the day, Magic Dagger Bow Unit is all that it is ever going to work with. And we all know how all works, he's going to make mincemeat out of this guy. So, 
it leaves you with like dagger and magic and dagger and magic can be a bit awkward um well dagger not so much except air i guess but it but still no no air he should be fine he should still one shot her in a great variety of situation it's mostly mages that are a problem because as usual guess what happens when you're fighting blade tomes Oh, or when you're finding a feeling, oh, suddenly that res does not become so great. So as a range fighter, he's a bit shaky. How about as a melee fighter? As a melee fighter, he is absolutely remarkable, actually. Uh, first off, despite the fact that he starts with four, at four strength, or four attack, sorry, I'm confusing games now. Despite the fact that he starts with 4 attack, he does end up, end up with 35, and because he has this very weird low attack at level 1, he gets a super boon in it. Uh, this actually allows him to get 39 base attack as a cav unit, very, very, very akin to Red, uh, to some extent. His stat line is kind of similar, though Red has such a superior weapon, it's not even worth comparing. So, yeah. What about comparison? There's none. The only comparison you can really use is base Burkut, and there's nothing base Burkut has higher than this Burkut outside of HP and speed. And the HP is kind of whatever, and the speed is just who cares? The dude threw away his speed to become stronger. So, yeah. Moving to builds. Now, one thing to note, if you feel like attack death bond would not be very consistent for what you're trying to do with Burkut, consider this. You can actually run Mystic Boost as your B skill and Quick Repost as your Seal skill. This allows you to heal yourself constantly, which makes up for the fact that, you know, if you're fighting a ranged unit that is a healer, you can't fight back. 90% of the time, anyway. So the healing back 6 kind of helps him just overcome that problem. Um, but also in general, since he's such a good duelist, it actually helps him. And it helps him stay afloat, so he's always in quick repose, regardless of if he's fighting dragons, or melee, or mages. Which is a problem attack death bond does not address, outside of dealing with melee units. So, uh, why would why would you choose between warding stance or distant defense? Well, it is quite normal. Um, if you're running warding stance 4, you're basically running into block specials to some extent. And if you're running distant defense instead, the goal of this one is just to completely shut down, as you could expect, blade tomes. Both of which have their benefits. Uh, not one of them is really better than the other. I know Melodonis was asking me and frankly there's not there there's no one that's better than the other. Warding stance is cheaper if anything. Uh, distant death 4 comes down to what you find. Warning stance comes down to do you find bolt fighter? You know it comes down to this. It makes it easier for Burkut to set up specials. Do understand one thing, however, if you throw away attack death bond so you can use the mystic boost quick repose set, bonfire is not a good special, you will want instead iceberg because of warding stance. If you're using distant death, bonfire still remains the best way to go. So that's it, let's move on. Now. Marita is a bit deceptive of a unit. I know quite a few people who are like, oh, she's just Ira again. And to some extent, yeah, I can kind of see why. Though I will also say she is Ira's niece, so it makes sense that she's similar to Ira. Uh, she does learn Astro in her own game, so Regnal Astro would be fair game, but she has Luna at base, and Regnal Astro requires her to speak to a certain character. I won't say the name. And not to mention 
And this is her when she's possessed. Uh, she does not really join you until she is, the shadow got the that the, the, the shadow sword gets disenchanted by another character. So I guess this is basically Marita before you recruit her, which is kind of ironic because the one character that actually disenchanted the sword is actually in this game. Kind of a shame that Forging Bond did not, you know. Um, have anything to say about that because it would have been super easy to work with this but oh well missed opportunity you know now one of the reason I say it's deceptively good is that it has the same effect as for SETI however it is better in the sense that it does cooldown minus one and it's from a melee unit ranged units cannot use gale force for one and cooldown minus one also opened the, the, the slot not only to Gale Force but for Aether as well. Let's explore builds. I don't have one, I don't have two, I don't have three, I don't have four, I have five sets to showcase. Yep, we're going to be here for a while. But first off, comparisons. Now, a lot of people wanted me to compare her to Ira. I feel like Ira is a bit more of a specialist. Uh, she tends to just use Ragnal Astra, and if you're comparing Ragnal Astra to whatever the fuck she dish out, dishes out, aside of Gale Force, uh, she doesn't have a whole lot going on for her. <laughs> Ragnal Astra is just that busted, and Ira's stat line is just that strong. Still, if you compare her to Marth, which is honestly the best Ira archetype that isn't Ira, Ira. Um, and the more balanced to be a duelist purely because of Fire Emblem and or his weapon, you end up realizing two things. First off, her attack is kind of low. Uh, Marth does get 10 dragon, dragon flowers while she only gets 5, so you're comparing essentially 34 to 36. Her speed is really high, to a point where it's almost overkill. However, that does get to some extent offset by the fact that Flashing, flashing Blade 4 is really good for her. So the fact that her speed is already so high allows her to just focus on getting more attack. Uh, despite Flashing Blade and everything. Despite not being able to have to run a special... Uh, an A skill, sorry that actually improves both her attack and speed. So, alright. Everything else is fairly similar, and yeah. By that extension, you may think, wow, Marita is just worse than Marth. Wow, Marita is just worse than X Ira archetype. Not really. Um, the strongest suit that Marita has is versatility. I have to say one thing that really makes me happy is the fact that Burkut is really unique. Marita is very versatile. But then after that it all goes to shit because big numbers is big numbers. Um, speaking of something that really kind of ticked me off is the fact that Corin is a trainee unit. Now I know we're not at training we're not at Corin yet, but um, hang on a sec for why I should explain this. Now trainee units typically at level 1 in Fire Emblem Heroes have less stats. However, at pl at level 40 they have more stats than most unit by 6 points in fact. Corin is a trainee unit for whatever reason. The first four alt, the, the first four characters that Corin got in Heroes, were not trainees. But then so, suddenly, after the Drift Banner, they became they became trainee units. Gee whiz! I feel like oh, what's that? What's that? Feh has one of its director being literally the director of Fates. Gee whiz, I wonder why we keep getting Fates characters. Gee whiz, I wonder why Corin is a trainee unit. I mean, I'm not trying to, to, to make it sound like a conspiration theory, but... 
fucking hell does it feel like the guy has such a boner for Corin that he was like, make her a trainee. What? But why? That doesn't make sense. And at that point, she would be a two movement infantry unit, uh, armored unit even. Fuck it, just do it. I really like her. She's my waifu. What about the male version? Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's make him trainee as well. Like that's the kind of thing that I feel like kind of went through, and it's like, ah. Oh. Now the reason why I brought this up is because Marita should have been a trainee unit. <laughs> Marita is an est archetype. She joins on chapter, I believe, 10 or 12, I believe it's 10, uh, as a level 2 Myrmidon. 2. And I believe, to give you an idea of how far that is in the game, I believe Therakia has 23 or 24 chapters. So, kind of deep. But yeah, so she comes as a level 2 Myrmidon with Luna. Which is why Luna is in, his, in her base kit. She learns Astra later down the line from a certain person. Uh, she also has a pref weapon. I'm at least hoping that th that, that version of Marita will be a trainee unit, but we'll see. The other thing that makes her very viable for a trainee unit is her base stats are god-awful. However, she comes with two things that makes her really strong in Therakio. A pref that has a 20% crit rate on top of being a 11 might brave sword. You heard that fucking right. Uh, our pursuit critical coefficiency is 5. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's quite simple. It basically makes your first hit works just as well. Your second hit will multiply the amount of crit that you have by your pursuit critical coefficiency. So if you have, say, a 20% crit rate, it jumps to to a 100% if you have a if you have five in this. Marita has a 20% crit multi-phase brave sword with a PCC of five. Yes, she crits all the fucking time. Oh, and she has Luna and Astra on top of this, and she gets adept after she promotes. But that's not what uh, what this is all about. The only the other thing that makes her so trainee like, I guess, is the fact that despite her having bad base stats, she has a 60% strength growth rate, 70% skill, and 80% speed. In FE5, the same game that has characters that have like 15% as their highest growth rate. The same game that makes character that has a, a that has a growth of like 40-50% look good. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Marita. So, yes, she starts weak but becomes really strong down the line, which is why I say a trainee unit would have made sense for her, unlike Corin. But oh well, moving on to builds now. Welcome to Educating About Therakia 101, anyway. So, Marita, first set is Luna with just basically base kit. Um, Threaten Death is basically what I'm using in everything. Threaten Death might not be ideal for the Luna set, because Luna does all defense to begin with. Uh, but it's still an extra 7 damage or so, so it's still worth mentioning. Threaten skill, well, threaten death in general, mostly, is the type of skill that really doesn't tend to be viewed highly, and I've been asked many, 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 many times, why do I still run threaten death on jam key? The reason is simple. Uh, when it comes down to Marita, for example, if you're dealing with an armored unit, you can actually bait it for it to be in range of Threaten, so you can just, you know, get an extra 5 damage per hit for free. It helps you, and it helps your team. Range units, which are the units that this doesn't help against, don't tend to have much defense. In which case, 
guess the fuck what. Threaten death becomes useless to begin with. You don't need to have to use threaten death if you already kill them, right? So yeah, this is why I consider threaten death as one of the better option for Marita. So, no follow up comboed with flashing blade allows you to just go hit proc with Luna permanently. It's also in her base kit. Uh, if you're using no follow up and you're fighting something like say Surter, who has wary fighter always. Uh, but doesn't run steady stands for which sometimes happen you get to just hit proc instantly and if you don't get to hit proc you still get to hit twice through wary fighter potentially kicking wary fighter down which is pretty good if you want your allies to just secure the kill afterward it's also good for other wary fighter units uh i know <laughs> I know Surter is far from the only one, so it's still worth mentioning. Stuff like uh, Halloween Jacob, for example, that you can just kill through Wary Fighter freely. No follow up becomes really good for that. Uh, uh, Base Mer is also another example uh, because of her stone. You get the idea. It's just really useful in those cases. So, yeah. If you want to spice it up, Special Spiral is really good with Dragon Fang. One charge does get lost in the process, but it does keep Dragon Fang consistent. Another thing you can do, though this is a bit more dangerous, is to run Wrath. Uh, if you get hit, then... But if you get hit to the point where Shadow Sword still works, but while Shadow, Shadow Sword still works, you could have... Oh, a brazen as your seal slot, which makes so that flashing blade plus your brazen does 12 extra damage instead of just life and death plus um, fucking flashing blade as the seal, which would only give five. Then this becomes pretty good. However, it is dangerous in the sense that getting hit, but just not too much, but not too little, is very difficult. is kind of a problem, still, and still worth mentioning. Now, I tend to use Attack Death 2 a lot on those on those sets, but I want you to realize, if you're using a unmerged Marita that is not Speed Plus, Attack Speed 2 is better. Speed Plus is bad for her, by the way. Don't go for it, you don't need that much speed. But if you're stuck with having a speed plus variant, well, attack death 2 it is. So yeah. But yeah, with Wrath you can charge Dragon Fang by just running away and then attack, uh, if that's required. Other than this, you could just, you know, have the extra 10 damage. A lot of people don't think that Dragon Fang is too good. Uh, obviously this is attack plus and plus 10, so, so plus 10, so this is optimal conditions. But still, uh, right now that's 32 damage with Dragon Fang. There's not uh, there's not a single way to proc a skill that would do better damage right now. Um, on merge, it's even more clear that Dragon Fang is your best bet. Even if you're not attack an attack plus, you're sitting essentially at 57 attack unmerged without attack minus. 57 is 28 damage, had the Wrath on top of it, and that would be 38 damage. Yeah, you get the idea. So, if you're taking, say, Marita here, right? And she's at 64 attack, fighting a, green, a, a 40 defense blue unit, right? Blue unit. And you're just going simply like this, uh, with Wrath, right? Uh, and you're actually in range, not even counting a brazen at that point, I'm just counting attack death 2. Your attack goes down to 52, you do 12 times 2, oh I'm sorry, because flashing blade does true damage, it goes down to 17 plus 2, uh, 17 times 2 even. And then the second hit procs dragon fang, 
for an extra oh, 42 damage because you get 32 damage from uh, the special itself and 10 damage from Wrath. Yeah, uh, 17 times 2 plus 42. That's 76 damage. That's 76 damage against a 40 defense blue unit. Yikes. <laughs> Even without Wrath, you typically get the kill. Even without the merge, you can typically get the kills for most units. Most unit. Do you understand that stuff like special fighter may slow you down? But if you're using something like Wrath, um, there's one thing that you can do is just run away to recharge it. And if you're dealing with special fighter like special fighter Tiki, with this set that's on screen, it does not matter. Because you can just run Special Spiral, get two charge from this. Flashing Blade gives you the last charge you're missing. And boom! You get this you get the kill through a guard like skill. Yeah, uh, it's kind of busted. Dragon Fang is your best damaging set. It's also the most consistent one. So yeah. Moving on to the second build. This time, well, the second, the third and fourth build, rather. So the first one is an AoE set. I hope I didn't surprise anyone with that one. Um, Lowin basically uses that very easily uh, with Flashing Blade. So obviously Marita can do just the same. So, yeah. It might be good to replace Flashing Blade for the AoE, but at the same time it's really hard to replace it for something better. You could run life and death, but that hurts her defense, which her defense are not great, but they are pretty decent still. And that's just the problem, right? You get an extra 2 or 3 damage from life and death, but you lose a lot of bulk and the, the speed you get is useless, since, well... Flashing Blade increases your damage on your AoEs. Special shout out to Stolen Ramen who actually put this screenshot together for me to use. I do not have Marita myself, so I could not actually showcase this myself, so it was pretty welcomed. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good way to do a budget life and death without hurting her bulk and without just throwing your speed to the to stupid amounts. It's just really hard to suggest something that would work better for AoEs. Like life and death is the only one that really works better. I would say death blow 4, but the damage you get from death blow 4 does not actually add to the AoE, so who cares? You get the idea. So, yeah. And just a typical AoE set. Now the set on the right is something you can't do with Lowin. You can't even try to do that. Because he doesn't have a cooldown minus one weapon. Marita can proc A for on every single fight she's in. Without even letting the enemy attack back. Let that sink in. Special Spiral gives two charge. Our weapon is a cooldown minus one weapon. Flashing Blade gives two charge on the first hit, and then you proc Aether on the second. Rinse and repeat. This is a good way to heal yourself up, and it's just basically a superior version to the Luna set. But albeit more expensive. It allows her to keep her HP high at all time, which makes Shadow Sword a bit more consistent. And if you have to take a hit on enemy face, you have a way out if required, which is definitely welcome. Now, the last set is the most obvious one. It's just a Gale Force set. Mystic Boost is really her best B skill because at the end of the day she doesn't need Desperation, she doesn't need Guard because typically if she hits something, it dies. So having Guard does not really help at that point. Uh, Mystic Boost is 
probably the best option you have for B because at that point it's the best way to keep your HP high just like the A for set. Now one thing that makes Gale Force set particularly nasty is the fact that you can combo this with Halloween, what the fuck, with Legendary Azura. Legendary Azura is a fantastic unit, honestly too good for her own good, and she allows you to easily get the 6 across the board from the buffs, and on top of this gives you 3 movement. She basically becomes a cavalry unit, not impeded by terrain whatsoever. Uh, and by terrain, I mainly mean trenches. And also, can go through trees. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, three movement, you can go in, kill something, back the fuck out. It's really strong. Um, though on higher merges it might be a problem to actually run Flashing Blade 4 because you might be doing too much damage. So it might be good at that point to switch to go down to, Sh to Flashing Blade 3. However, that comes down to just how you feel about your team. Uh, for example in A4 Raids where you typically have at least one fortress over the enemy and maybe sometimes even two. If you upgrade it early like I did, because my fortress in attack is 5, then it becomes a bit less consistent and Flashing Blade 3 might be better. Thankfully though, fortress caps at, fl at level 5 now, so... There's no reason to level... you can't level up to 6. 5 is just the cap, so, you know. So, yeah, that concludes the build showcase for Marita. Let's move on to Corin, the most brain-dead character of this, of this game. Oh my god, I despise the fact that Corin is this strong. So, this is the character that makes no sense whatsoever to be here. Miss Di Diarrhea herself. So... Yeah, uh, you might expect the the whole, wow, this set looks so underwhelming, like Sudden Panic is very underwhelming. Which, by the way, Sudden Panic is locked to infantry and flyer units. Armored unit cannot use it, neither can calves. Sudden Panic is very awkward to use, and honestly, in a lot of cases, it becomes a case of, why would you kill your B skill? Why don't you just use Panic Ploy? It's a seal and a C skill. It's way cheaper. Why the fuck? So yeah, Southern Panic won't be really seeing a lot of use. Yes, you can make a lot of character like Aversa to some extent, but it doesn't really work, because Aversa not only has the stat for it, well, in a, uh, it's in a weapon, thankfully. Uh, but on top of it doesn't lose her B skill, and on top of it she lo she lowers every stat by 3 on top of panicking you. So it's really hard to say that sudden panic actually suddenly makes her irrelevant. If anything, it just highlights all the reason why she's so stupid as a unit, so stupidly broken. Attack speed solo is just about the worst solo she could have gotten. Um, you'll see why once I'll be talking about builds. And, well, actually I can just make it really easy. If, if she's alone, she gets 12 speed. That's 49 speed. Had any kind of buff whatsoever, and that's just retarded. Like, just fucking why? Again, it's just the fucking Maida, I think it is the name of the director of Fates. It's just the Maida speaking at this point. <sighs> Our weapon can be fairly awkward since you can't really provide buffs easily. Um, like you can with, well... Uh, what the fuck would I... Ooh. I? I just lost my train of thought. Anyway, the point is, our weapon is 
decent-ish, but she only she can't be near of more than one ally. Because if she is, uh, she do so much stats that her weapon becomes not nearly as good. Still, it is kind of just what it is. Also, don't listen to her in Japanese because she sounds like a hentai uh, fucking voice actress. Jesus Christ. Is it bad? So, let's talk about comparison. Well, you'll be seeing this team a lot. So, if you compare her to Adrift, Mel Adrift Melkorin, which, by the way, was the best infantry dragon unit of this game until this banner, just because of his stat line. His stat line is that fucking good. Look at the difference in stats. Do you see the problem? Give up? Yeah, there's not much of a difference. Corin gets 3 res, 2 speed, 1 HP. This is where our trainee bonus went. I fucking hate this. Keep in mind, Corin is a 173 BST Gen 2, well, Gen 2, Gen 3 infantry unit. Because she's a trainee unit. And guess what? The second she gets a merge, she scores just the same as a unit like Legendary Hector. Though Legendary Hector gets blessings, but you get the point. Uh, Harden, then, I guess. Mel Grimma scores the same as she does. Except Mel Grimma is one movement while she's two. And Mel Grimma doesn't have a good pref, unlike her. So... Oh my god, my head hurts. One of the things... So basically, she completely power creeps Corin stat line-wise. And then on top of that, they make her colorless? Why? Who thought this was okay? Probably Maida, considering, but Jesus Christ. It is so brain dead, my head hurts. Another thing that makes Savage Breath so good, uh, and that one is a bit less obvious, is the fact that Savage Breath is the type of weapon that you can combo with Mordecai. I know it's, it comes to no shock, but Mordecai did get, demote, get, did get demoted recently, which means that you can actually get this as a free player. Now, the point of Mordecai is the fact that you can combo stuff like Oh, I don't know. Speed tactic and rest tactic. And then on top of that, attack their flink. Smite her as she's buffed into an enemy pack. This allows Corin to get 6 attack, speed, death, and res. Already there, you're off to a nasty start, right? The enemy lose 4 to all stats. And then Savage Breath kicks up. And gives an extra 6 attack speed death res. So you j literally... Oh my god. You literally just get 12 to all stat for free. While debuffing the enemy by 4 to all stats. Do you see the problem with this? You're basically giving an extra 48 BST on a unit with technically 173 BST. That's 220 stat wise. And then you had a 19 might weapon, so it jumps up to 240. And that's without an A skill or a steel slot. Jesus Christ! So, moving to the build section. Yeah. So, guard is a good option for both set, by the way. But I just thought I'd mention Nulsi Disrupt more than this encounter. So, I do consider Rest Plus to be her best boon. Uh, because at this point, her attack is just ridiculous. Uh, the fact that she hits 70 attack with just a plus 6 attack is retarded beyond belief. 
So, yeah, 70 attack, 53 speed, 47 def, and 46 res one buffed. This is without an A skill or a seal skill open. Brazen can be a bit awkward uh, because she's just that bulky. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? If she kills whatever is in front of her and stays at full HP, fuck yeah. If she does take damage to a point where Brazen procs, Brazen makes it even harder for her to take damage. To give you an idea, the set, the set on the left with Defra Solo combined with Savage Breath, which is one of the reasons why I said uh, attack speed solo is the worst solo for her. She wants bulk. Because her attack and speed is already stupid, stupid high. Like, it's just dumb. You don't need more attack and speed on top of what you already have. But yes, if you hit Brazen, Defra Solo, and Savage Breath, you are sitting at 60 defense. 60 defense. And fucking 52 res. Do you feel like that's okay? I know I don't. I feel sick. And then, to make matters worse, she hits 77 attack. What the actual shit? As for the second set, it's probably going to be the best set she has. This encounter, no see disrupt. Oh, what's that, Veronica? Oh, she just ting ting on me and then dies. Fucking yikes, dude. Fucking yikes. Well, she doesn't exactly ting all the time, but she barely does any damage at that point. So, yeah. Corrin is a really insanely difficult unit to take down, and she has two movement to make this even worse. A really busted unit. Honestly, I consider her equal to Tiki, and depending on the team on, on the team comp, she can actually beat Tiki. The problem is that her weapon is a bit inconsistent in the sense that you need to have no one around you. And the turn after you had no one around you to really take a full payoff from that weapon, you're not buffed anymore. So that's a weakness. That's a huge weakness. But it makes her a bit gimmicky. And you know how I feel about gimmicky stuff. I want stuff to be consistent. So, because of that, I consider her slightly inferior, but not by much. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, she is insanely strong. Just because of sheer amounts of stats and the fact that she's an infantry unit is what makes her this busted. Yikes. Moving on to Tiki now. So, Tiki comes in with literally the same breath as a legendary counterpart, and basically the same amount of stats, and then they decide to give her special fighter, because that's literally what every Tiki runs ever. But then they backpedal and go, Brazen are a good idea to combo with this, and it's like, huh? What? Why? I don't get it, dude. I don't get it. Th this is also the worst brazen to run on her. So, fuck me, right? Uh, well, no, it's not actually the worst. You can actually make use of her speed. If you are if you run brazens, you can run brazen speed res, actually, pretty consistently on Tiki. Uh, it does help her fix her speed problem, because her speed is a tad low. But, again, it's just a tad low. It's still pretty decent. On low mergers, though, it's absolutely very, very welcome for her to get. Or speed rest solo, but that's not a thing. I don't think it's, it is anyway. But, oh well. You know. As for the C skill, this is the one reason that actually makes her better than Corrin, I feel like. 
It gives her 4 to all stats if she is adjacent to no unit or a dragon unit. Obviously, if you're going to be using her, you'll want to be using a second unit that's a dragon. This should not come as a surprise. Uh, the reason why I say this is because that way you can have more flexibility in your team. Yes, you could just leave Tiki to do her own thing on the, on the other side of the map, but that way you could still support her decently, allow her to run bonds on top of what she's using, and just overall gives her more option while also giving you more options. At least when it comes down to movements. So, yeah, I genuinely do think that if you want to use her to full potential, you want a dragon on your team. So, alright. What about the comparison? The comparison, Jay? Well, I mean, we're following a trend here. Oh look, it's literally me, but stronger, and instead of being blue, I'm colorless. Yeah, um... So... This version of Tiki gets more two more attack at the cost of one speed and one res. That is it. As for the matter of it being better, I don't think so. I genuinely think Legendary Tiki has a better stat line. However, the thing that makes the other Tiki better is the fact that she's colorless. Blue is a terrible color. Just because there are so many greens. And being colorless helps a lot. I keep hearing people that say that dragon killers are everywhere. And honestly, that's only true for Dirty and Julia. Those are, uh, those are very present. But like falchion and so on those don't tend to exist and the fact that she doesn't have the color disadvantage anymore kind of just shits a little on naga uh, to put it simply which is kind of ironic considering she's literally naga's child but yeah it's it's a bit of a yikes now when it comes down to stat it's very simplistic You've seen my Tiki, you've seen me doing Aether Raid and soloing the entire team with this set. Of fucking course I'm going to be talking about this set. You can also replace Ignis for Aether if you think that, that you know, healing yourself would be better. If you plan on using her like I do in Aether Raids, Aether is absolutely the best special for her. Ignis is a huge chunk of damage, however. Uh, unlike most other unit, I've only buffed her stat up by 4 because that's the type of stat increase that you should be expecting uh, for her because of Solitary Dream. So yeah, Solitary Dream also gives her March essentially, which makes her a 2 movement dragon for very very easy to fulfill conditions. The part that makes me a bit confused is the fact that if you look at the colors of all the things around her, it looks like, well, the Astra sign, doesn't it? The, astra, the colors of the Astra blessings. But, oh well, I guess. I don't know. Oh, that's just me. So yeah, I do consider Tiki to be the better unit. If you think your speed is not good enough, especially on low merges, or if you don't have speed plus, Darting Stance 3. Use it. You'd be surprised just how good it is. Because the few unit you won't be able to double, Darting Stance will tend to just do just what you're needing to double them. So... Yeah. This concludes my reviews on this banner. Honestly, this is one of the best banner we've had in a long time. For the first Alv, and then the second Alv is just... We have big numbers! Yes! Also, we don't have weaknesses anymore! Yes! That's a bit of a bummer. Uh, Burkut and Marita are surprisingly well balanced. I guess would be the way to put it. Burkut has a very as a very strong game against ranged unit that aren't stabs unit. 
Um, but he's also held back by the sense that if he's not do fighting ranged units, he basically gets nothing from his lands. And Marita is, well, yet another sword infantry unit. But she also gets a weapon that actually, well, fixes most of the issues uh, she would have normally had. Basically, what I mean by this is she's basically Rodger with a pref. Which I get that Rodger never had a pref to begin with, while Marita did. But still, come on, Rodger is such a sad tale. Such a sad tale. But yeah, with this 15 minute review, I think I'm just going to go to sleep because it's literally 12.40 a.m. and I have to stream tomorrow. Um, so, well, I won't be able to see you in the comments until I'm done with streaming or unless I wake up at a decent hour. <sighs> Hopefully the latter. So, yeah. Have a good night, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.